שלום, בוקר טוב אפריקה. It's... Oh, Hebrew. When I, whenever I start speaking to an English uh, audience, I make with you a deal. If you will help me with my poor English, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will help you with your poor Hebrew. It's a deal. So, so many words that I don't have, so you will simply help me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm here three times, as I've seen. Um, I brought you... I brought you warm, warm regards from Ima, from Ima Eretz Israel. I want to tell you that Eretz Israel misses you so much, so much. Ima is looking so beautiful these days, all covered with flowers, blue seas, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessed us with such rains this winter, and she misses you. Ima, is a little bit scared these days. Last week I gave a, a, I had a shiur in the Golan. We could clearly hear the bombarding from the Syrian border. We can clearly feel the tension in the Lebanon border. And Ima wants you with her. The Gaon Mivilna Hagra used to say that even if you come for a small visit to Eretz Israel, you give your for Ima Koach, but more than that, Israel will give you Koach. Even if you come for a small visit, you'll come back home with such presents because Ima never lets you go home without giving you something. Nachon, when you come to your Ima, a second before you go out, she says, Rega, Rega, I made such a cake for Shabbat. Take some to the way. Take a sweater, it's cold outside. If you cannot even come and visit Ima, at least I give you homework. Once a day, just stand and ask her, Ma shlomech, Yerushalayim? That's what David HaMelech asks from us. Sha'alu shlom, Yerushalayim. Once a day, ask, how are you, Ima? That's all she needs from you. And Be'ezrat Hashem, Be'ezrat Hashem, all those tefillot are going to bring the Mashiach, and that's why we are here now. When I wanted to come to Africa, they asked me, do you speak in front of men? I said, no. And they said, why? And I said, because men are really not relevant for the Geula. HaKadosh <laughs> Baruch Hu said, Bizchut nashim tzidkaniyot nigalnu, because of tzadikot women, we were redeemed, ve bizchut nashim tzidkaniyot nigal. So that's the relevant thing now, nashim. And when I saw the women of South Africa, and I compared them to the women of Israel, I couldn't help myself asking, how come they are so calm? How come they are not screaming, yelling, so nice at the roads? We, before the light changes to yellow, papm, papm, papm. We are nervous women in Eretz Israel and hear everything in such slow motion. <laughs> How come? How come we are the real Africans in Eretz Israel? How come you are so calm? At first I thought that it was because of the surrounded houses, this dignity of privacy in Israel. Whenever we need pepper for our salad, we take out the hand from the window to the kitchen of the neighbor and we take pepper. Maybe it's this, no, it's not this. And then I thought maybe it was the fact that you all have maids. Wow. Wow, and it's not that because in Israel we also have maids and we are so nervous before she comes to clean all the house so she won't think we are dirty. So it's not that either. So why are you so calm? That's not the question. Why are we in Israel so hysterical? Because we feel Mashiach is coming.
And when something huge is about to happen, you don't have patience anymore. It's like all those women that fasted so bravely all Yom Kippur and they faint on Neila. Why do you faint now? It's the end of the day. Because she already imagines the glass of tea and the cake and she faints. It's like the children that feel the year ending before the big uh, vacation, they cannot go to school anymore. Ima, I'm sick, the teacher died, the school burned. I cannot go anymore because you feel the end coming. It's like when you go to a new apartment. You cannot stand your old apartment anymore, Ichsa. You already smell the smell of the new apartment. In Israel, we wait for the Mashiach. We know it's there anytime, any minute, and you are going to see him in the Facebook. You like it or you don't like it? Today, We'll talk about the power of a Jewish woman. When I see Jewish women, I can't understand how do they do it. Such koach, such, I have so many students that lost uh, husbands in the wars and their only son in the war afterwards. Such koach, where do we all have koach? We all. Jewish women, we carry with us the koach of four women that always go with us. Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Lea. The Midrash says that whenever chas v'chalila, something bad is about to happen to a woman of Am Yisrael, HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls a special jury, a special bedin. It's Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Lea. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu asks them, do you think my daughter can stand it? Do you think she'll be brave enough to stand it, Sarah? And Sarah says, yes. And you, Rivka? And Rivka says, mm-hmm. And you, Lea? And Lea says, can. And you, Rachel? And Rachel Imenu says, yes. I will help her. Today we are going to learn about the four powers of Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Lea, that each and every one of us have it in our blood and soul. I will say it in Hebrew and then Be'ezrat Hashem, translate it. Sarah, Sarah, Koach, Hatzochakot. Rivka, Koach, Hatinokot. Lea, Hakoach lechakot, Rachel hakoach livkot. Sarah teaches us the power of laughter, koach hatzochakot. Rivka teaches us the power of babies, koach hatinokot. Lea teaches us the power of waiting and waiting, hakoach lechakot. And Rachel teaches us the power of tears, hakoach livkot. Let's speak of the power of laughter. I hear so many women tell me, telling me, Yemima, I want some nachat, some pleasure from my children and husband. Do you know how your husband and children are waiting for a little bit of nachat from you? They want to see you happy. The Ben Ishchai says that a woman that laughs once a day loudly inside her house, all the good mazal is going to come to her once a day. Ha, ha, ha. And you have it. You have health. You have marriages. You have parnasa. What's the meaning of the word tzchok? Tzchok in Leshona Kodesh, in the holy language, means tse mehachok. Get out of the laws you know. When a Kadosh Baruch Hu says to Sarah Imenu, you are going to be a mother at 90, she says, Ma, Ma Pitom, tzchok. And the Kadosh Baruch Hu says, Nachon, tzchok yaase lach elokim, tse mehachok, forget about everything you know. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will show you such miraculous things. Don't ever lose hope. When am I going to get married? When am I? Just be happy. I see so many girls waiting to get married and they ask me, Amima, how come she got married before me? She's not as smart. She's not as beautiful. She doesn't come from such a good family. Nachon. But she is smiling and she is happy and you have all the diasporas of Am Israel on your face when you meet someone. 
הקדוש ברוך הוא teaches us that happiness and laughter are not natural. It's not that you say, she is happy, she was born happy, she has this character, we are depressive in our family, my grandmother uh, got suicide, my Saba is, we are sad people. To be happy is the greatest of mitzvot. Mitzvah gdola lihiyot besimcha. What does it mean it's a mitzvah? It's like the Shabbos candles. You don't stand there and say, please Hashem, make them light. Nachon, you light them yourself. That's the way to be happy. Do anything to make yourself happy because when the woman is happy, all the house is happy, all South Africa is happy, all the world is happy. What should we do in order to be happy women? It's very, very simple. Chava, when she got expelled from Gan Eden, she got a curse. You'll be always sad in the context of two things, being a wife and being a mother. Arba arbe etzvonech veheronech beetzev teldi banin veel ishech teshukatech. Those two things will make you sad. There is no woman that gets up in the morning and says, Yoo-hoo, I'm so happy. No. You will always get up and say either, when will I meet him? When will I meet him? When will I meet him? Or the other half of women, why did I meet him? Why did I meet him? Why did I meet him? And the second thing that causes you to be sad are the children. Either you get up in the morning and say, I want children, I want children, I want children. Either you say, I want them to get married and go live in South Africa. <laughs> we are sad creatures. That's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to us, it's a huge effort for you, Ima, and wife and girl to be happy. Do it. Because when you are happy, the world turns around. So, Chava was expelled from Gan Eden. She had the curse of sadness. Why? Because she ate the forbidden fruit. Says the Maharal, woman, do you know what will mend your pain, will make you happy? The sin was eating. Eat. <laughs> Stop with your horrible diets. Everyone Everyone prefers you fat and happy than skinny and horrible. Be nice. So the first thing to be happy, le'echol. The second thing, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu expels Chava from heaven, he sees her so sad, he makes her new clothes. Oz vehadar levusha. Levusha say chazal in the Gemara, lo busha. You won't be ashamed anymore. Buy yourself something new. Your husband will say to you, but you already have. They think we buy because we don't have. <laughs> we buy because we don't have happiness. When you feel sad, go and buy yourself something new. New shoes, a new skirt, a new car. Mashukatan. <laughs> Just see to it that you will be happy. And the third thing, Chava was expelled from Gan Eden and she had the curse of being sad because she spoke to the wrong thing. She spoke to the snake. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to you, conversation will bring you back your happiness. Speak with someone that listens to you, not your husband, your sister, your good friend, someone you like. Be a happy woman. That's the art of Ima Sarah. Whenever you are not happy enough, says the Maharal, you say to her, Ima Sarah, give me the power of Tzchok. Rivka, Koach Hatinokot, to bring babies to this world. Who needs babies in such a cruel world? Rivka Imenu is waiting. For 19 years, she is a baron. She is waiting for a baby. She is so happy that she is pregnant at last after, after so many tefillot. And then she feels a struggle inside her womb and says, Ani lo rotza. 
Who needs that? למה זה אנוכי? What happens to you? You waited for 19 years. What's wrong with you? She knows. She is the carrier of the worst hatred that exists in the world. She carries in her womb Esav, the father of, the father of Lenin, of Stalin, of Hitler. When she feels the contractions, she knows it's the fearsome Jew in the Bolshevik revolution. Lama ze anochi, why did you choose me? You know that I'm a lawyer. When I uh, was uh, uh, witnessing a, a criminal uh, uh, mishpat, uh, I always used to see this murderer or thief standing there and his ima sitting in the audience and her eyes asking the question of Rivka Imenu, why me? Why did you choose me to be the ima of this person? Lama ze anochi? And what does she do? She goes to the holy ultrasound. Vatelech lidrosh et Hashem. She goes to those two people, Shem ve'ever, and she asks them, Mazze? And they tell her, Rivka, don't worry. In many, many years from Yaakov, there is going to be a very tzaddik person called Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, and from Esav, there is going to be a Roman emperor. His name will be Antoninus, and they'll be very, very good friends. Thank you, says Rivka, and she goes out happy. What makes you happy about those news? You are the mother of hatred in the world. Who needs, who needs babies in such a cruel world? She saw something no one else saw. In many, many, many years, the mother of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the wife of Rabban Gamliel, gives birth to a little baby. It's forbidden to make Brit Milah to babies. Whoever makes Brit Milah, you kill the Ima and the baby. And she says to her husband, Rabban Gamliel, we make the Brit Milah. What happens? Happens. They make the Brit Milah. The Roman emperor hears that and says, you must come to my palace. I kill you, the Ima and the baby. And she takes her little Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi to the Roman Emperor on her long way, nine days after birth, she is so thirsty, she has a Roman friend. She knocks on her door and says to her, can you give me a glass of water? She says to her, what are you doing your ninth day after birth? She says, the Emperor wants to kill me and my son. And she says to her, I just got a little baby. I gave birth nine days ago. His name is Antoninus. Let's exchange babies. You'll take mine that did not go through the Brit Mila, and it will save your life. She takes little Antoninus to the emperor. She nurses the little baby, which becomes a ger, a convert. Chazal tell us it's because he drank the milk of this tzaddika woman, she comes to the emperor and he sees that he's not circumcised, circumcised, and he says, why did you lie? Let this woman go. What was the comfort of Ima Rivka? She knew that the world will be full of hatred. She knew that wars are going to be in the world. But mothers will cause a short ceasefire in hatred. As long as there are mothers in the world, there will be mercy in the world because we all have babies. Last week was the Yorzeit of my beloved son, Zichrono Livracha, that died after horrible suffering and uh, I remember those days staying with him months and months in the emergency room in Hadassah and Karem Hospital in Jerusalem. And the worst were the Shabbatot. Shabbat, I had to stay there alone. My husband says to me, I'm going to stay with the children. Will you be all right? And I say, Ken, betach, go, it's okay. But when I see him going far away, tears are going up my throat. And who is waiting all the Shabbat to spend with uh, in the emergency room? 
Noga, she comes from the kibbutz. She can't look at my face. She hates me because I'm a docit, religious. She's scared that I will stuck in her hand Tehillim and tell her, say Tehillim. And the other woman is Suha, the Arab mother, that her son also is fighting for his life. I go up to the emergency room. No one of them is looking at me. They are in the window. And I light my Shabbos candles and I start to cry with such tears. And suddenly on my right, I feel someone standing. I see Noga, the kibbutznikit, standing near me, near my Shabbat candles, crying her heart out. And then I feel someone else standing on my left, Suha, the Arab woman in front of my Shabbat candles, crying her heart out. And I said to my, myself, Yemima, Ze Sha'ar HaShamayim, that's the gate of heaven. And I'm sure they say in their own language what I say in my tefillah, in front of my Shabbos candles, Vezakeni Legadel Banim Uvne Banim. Give me the privilege of having my children alive and strong. None of us children survived, not mine, not hers, and not Noga's. But we experienced a moment of mercy, of motherhood mercy in this world. That's why the place we give birth uh, through the womb is called in Hebrew rechem. It's the word rachamim. Whenever you bring a baby to this world, it's not a baby that comes to this world, it's another mother that is born. It's more power of mercy and rachamim. As long as there are mothers ba'olam, there are mercy and rachamim ba'olam. Homework, another baby. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. And here we go to the third mother. אמא לאה. לאה is the power to wait. Why do you divorce so fast? רגע. Men need time to learn. A lot of time. 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. I'm still waiting. Lea knows that one morning after the wedding, you get up and look at him, and he looks at you, and he says, Vehinehi Lea, that's not what I meant. And you look at him and say, Vehinehu Esav, that's not what I meant. And she is waiting. She knows how to wait, even though everyone laughs at her, at Lea, that marries. Her sister's husband, Rachel, should have been the bride. Leah got there and was the bride, and Yaakov did not know anything about it. She is the hated woman, Senua. She becomes the beloved woman, Nesua. How do you become from Senua to Nesua? She is waiting and saying, Toda, Toda, Toda. She got a baby, Reuven. Everyone says to her, your husband hates you, don't you care? She says, Reuven, HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves me. He gave me such a son. Then she has another son, she calls him Shimon. But your husband hates you. Shama Hashem ki senua anochi. HaKadosh Baruch Hu looked at my pain and he gave me also this present. And then Levi, Ata yilave ishi elai. Now he will come with me. He won't have any choice. Why? Because I have to go to the doctor, to tipat chalav, to uh, give the loidat ma, to the babies. I carry two babies. There were no carriages in the Bible. There was no uh, bugaboo. I don't know how you call those uh, agalot. So she's taking Reuven on the one hand, Shimon on the one hand, who will take Levi. Yaakov, I need your help. And he's going with her in the street. And everyone is looking and saying, look, he is really with her. 
and she is so proud. But Yamima, it's artificial. As ma, at the beginning, it should be artificial. Who would compliment you if it won't be artificial? I say to my husband, take up your eyes from the Gemara and say to me, I'm beautiful. He doesn't take his eyes up, but he says, you are beautiful. <laughs> And I'm so happy because words have their own power. We are going to talk about it, Be'ezrat Hashem, at our uh, next shiur, if Mashiach doesn't come in between. <laughs> if they will let the donkey in, because I saw that here it's very uh, secure. They, doesn't, uh, they don't. Um, She's waiting. She's waiting and waiting, and she knows that one day he'll see her and say, Wow, what a brave woman. He will say good words about her. We see the beautiful song that every man sings to his wife on Erev Shabbat, Eshet Chayil. At the beginning, he's asking, Eshet Chayil, mi yimtza? Who can find such a woman? At the end, he says, Rabot banot asu chayil. There are so many. So decide yourself, mi yimtza or rabot banot, who can find such a woman or there are plenty of such women. And the Gaon Mivilna explains geniusly, before he praised her from Aleph to Taf, he did not see her qualities. When he starts praising her, even though it's artificial, אלף בית גימל דלת אשת חיל מיומצא ורחוק בלילי מיכרה בתח בלב בעלה שללה לא יחסר גמלה תולתו ולא רע כל ימי חייה ותקום בעוד לילה listen you are really something and you know what all the women of עם ישראל are something רבות בנות עשו חיל ואת עלית על כולן I gave homework to my students to write an אשת חיל for your husband from אלף to תף compliments he is איש טוב, he is בעל, he is גדול בתורה, he is ד, 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 never mind, three compliments <laughs> are enough. The power of אימא לאה, whenever you feel your patience is over, call אימא לאה and tell her, אימא, אימא, give me כוח לחכות. The כוח you had, don't divorce that fast, please. Nothing very, very better is waiting for you. <laughs> Miss cannot. I brought you the Israeli pessimism. Um, and the fourth koach. The koach of Ima Rachel. The koach of tears. We don't want to be crying women, Yemima. We want to be happy women. You just said to be happy is to laugh. Koach atzchok. How come you are talking about the power of tears, of Ima Rachel, that cries and cries and cries until HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to her, Dai, min e kolech mi bechi, enayich mi dimaa. David HaMelech teaches us that to know how to cry is to know how to be a hopeful woman. Whoever forgets crying simply gave up his redemption. The fact that on every Tisha B'Av we are still sitting on the floor in the Kotel Ma'aravi and crying, it means we still have hope. David Melech marries Bathsheba and Natan the prophet comes to him and says, you've done a sin. You are going to have a beautiful baby from this Bathsheba, but he's going to be so sick and die at the end. David Melech gives birth to such a beautiful baby, and this baby is so sick. And David Melech sits on the floor and tears his clothes and cries. He doesn't uh, shower, he doesn't eat anything. And one day, he sees his servants looking very, very strange. He says to them, tell me the truth. Something happened. Met Hayeled, did my child die? And they tell him, Met Hayeled, your child has died. Why didn't you tell me? He says to them. And they say, because we were scared. When he was alive, you sat like this on the floor. You tore your clothes, you did not eat. So what will happen now? He says to them, you stupid people, open a table, bring me new clothes, bring me food to eat. Why, they ask him, 
אמש צעקתי ובכיתי. Yesterday I yelled and cried and cried, כי אמרתי, אולי יחיה הילד, because I said, maybe this child will live. אבל עכשיו, but now, הן אנוכי הולך אליו, והוא לא ישוב אליי. I'm going to him, he won't come back to me. Such a beautiful interpretation for tears. Chazal tell us that as long as you have tears, it means you have hope for things to become better. When you get to the Kotel Ma'aravi and you cannot shed one tear, it's not good. Try even, the Ben Ishchai says, to imitate the voice of crying. Ribono shel olam. You know how to do it to your husband very well when you need something. Ribono shel olam, please help me. I can't anymore. Without the tears of the women of Am Yisrael, how would we have hope? That's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu made us so easily crying, so easily laughing. Do you know why I love teaching women? Because women have this beautiful characteristic I call in Hebrew, Bocheket. Bocha and Tzocheket together. A woman can come to me devastated. Yeah, baby, I can't anymore with this husband of mine. I tell her something funny and she says, Nachon, who cares about him? <laughs> In one second, you have the capacity of being comforted. That's the way Yeshayahu Hanavi describes the Geula. You are in the middle of such a cry and suddenly you see your children that you've lost, the husband that you waited for so long, as tiri venahart, ufachad verachav levavech, you will have tears and laughter at the very same time. That's what I see in my shiurim, women crying and women laughing. That's the muscle that brings the geula. That's the heart. Pachad verachav levavech. Do you still laugh? Do you still cry? Geula is here. Harav Lau, the chief rabbi of Yisrael, when he was in the uh, uh, concentration camp, the camps were released and the American soldier found him hiding between, behind a huge pile of bodies and he told him, smile little child, I came to save you. He told him, I forgot how to smile and to cry, I forgot also. Many years ago, I don't have any tear anymore. And Harav Lau says that under his chupa in Eretz Israel, many years after, suddenly he feels something wet going down his cheeks. It's tears. For so many years, he did not experience tears. And then he said, I knew. Until now, it was destruction. From now on, it will be redemption. I'm building a Jewish house. I want us all now to try and cry. Whenever I have the privilege of entering Harav Ovadia Yosef's room, the chief Sfaradi rabbi of Eretz Israel, I know I have only two minutes to spend with him, and all I want to ask him is, what's the most important thing to tell the women in South Africa, in Batyam, in Tel Aviv? And he says to me, it's not Shabbat, it's not Sni'ut, it's not Chala. Tell them, tell them that the Hashem needs a bit, a little bit more tefillot of Benot Yisrael in order to bring the Mashiach. He told me, do you know what Bat Yisrael is? Bat is the black of the eye of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shomreni ke'ishon bat ayin. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees many of his daughters sitting and davening together after a shiur Torah, tell them, he promised me, Tell them, if any one of them davens one minute besheket for something she really needs and wants, tell them 500 skies are opened above their heads that minute and their tefillah goes up to kiseh hakavod. I've seen so many miracles from this tefillah, be'emet. I want us now to make one daka, one minute, of a huge tefillah from the depth of our hearts. 500 skies are opened above this hall right now, and we are going to Devon 
what's the correct order of tefillah? First of all, for yourself, told me Harav Uvadia Yosef. For oneself, I want to be happy, I want babies, I want hope, I want koach, I want love. Second of all, Davin, for someone close, your sister, your brother, your neighbor, your son. And third, Davin, for this holy Am Yisrael, this good Am Yisrael. It's not true what we see in the media that we are all the time fighting and they hate the world of the Torah and religion. Lo nachon. I go from university to university. I see the secular students so thirsty to learn, so thirsty to know. So let's make now one minute of tefillah gedola, each and every one of us. תהא השעה הזאת, שעת רחמים ועת רצון. יהי רצון that whoever waits for her love to come, שידוך, will see good things this month, say amen. Whoever is waiting for a little baby, you'll come in nine months and say to me, ימימה אל הנער הזה התפללתי. אמן. That all the sad will become happy, all the poor will become rich, all the fat will become skinny, all the skinny will become fat in happy circumstances. תודה רבה, אפריקה. תודה רבה.